Because the person that can take that and twist it into glory is here today. And he's our special guest. His name is Jesus. He is our rock. He is our, our warrior. He is our shelter. Amen? Somebody say amen. amen. Shout to 
the Lord. Clap your hands like this. Come on. Praise him with your hand claps today. Let the heavens hear it. Come on. have distractions all day long. In worship, in our life. But if we don't stop to just listen to the word and the voice of God, we'll not let him break through.
So in the name of Jesus, we break through the distractions today by the blood of the Lamb. It may just be technical, but you know, we have a tendency to let technology interfere with our spiritual connection with God. Sometimes we allow the water to get into our boat. And I'm not going to let that happen today. In the mighty name of Jesus, I ask that you break through the minds and the hearts of myself, starting with me and with everybody here. Holy Spirit, move through this place today. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that you take away all the distractions. And I'm not just talking about the pops of the, the sound system. I'm talking about the distractions that take our minds away from what we're supposed to be focusing on today. And that's the very presence of our Lord. You see, the popping in the sound system is just a manifestation of what's going on in the heart and the mind. So we're going to just spend some time waiting on the Lord right now. Father, we wait on you. Break through God. important thing here today, the movement of the Holy Spirit, the presence of our Lord Jesus. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters, not even the worst of your circumstances, because if you don't focus in on the presence of Jesus Christ in your life, then those circumstances will continue to grow and overwhelm you. There's only one solution, one answer. And that's the power and the presence of God in our Jesus. There's nothing worth more could ever come close. Nothing can compare. You are living Shame is a
never come close Nothing can compare You are living alone Your presence Your presence oh. I've tasted and seen Of the sweetest of
You're vital, Father God, for this morning. Show up strong, God. This battle in the spirit, not only against the church, but there's many in this place today that are battling in the spirit today. In the name of Jesus, Satan, you have no stronghold on any of my brothers or sisters here today. We claim your blood. We claim your victory. We claim the power that you've brought us with your Holy Spirit to push back the darkness, Father God. Break through, God. Father, I pray that you allow the hearts to surrender to you, God, so you can take the burden, Father God, off of us, Lord. Move in such a way today, God, that will free us, God, to see with kingdom eyes, with eyes that are filtered through the spirit of the Holy One instead of filtered through the flesh in the world. Father God, like Paul, drop the scales from our eyes today, God, to see who you are. I don't know about you, but who needs a breakthrough today? Who needs a breakthrough in your spirit today? Who needs a breakthrough in your struggle today? Who needs a breakthrough in your bondage today? Come on, somebody shout, Jesus! I'm going to let the Holy Spirit move this morning. I'm going to do something different. I want those of you who need prayer and I don't care what it's for and you don't need to say if you need prayer right now I want you to raise your hand everybody look around this time I want everybody to look around now I want those around these people with the hands raised even if it's your hand raised Take turns. Lay your hand on that person. And let's just start praying. Let's start just praying for those who need a breakthrough. You can share what you need a breakthrough for, or you don't. Let's just spend a few minutes praying for one another. You don't have to be the pastor to lay hands and pray for healing. You don't need to be a leader. You don't need to be a minister. You just need to need Jesus. And you just need to be willing to be obedient. So lay your hands on one another. Pray for one another. Lord Jesus, you see the hearts today. You see the needs, God. You see the areas where they need a breakthrough today, Father God. And maybe it's just a funk. Maybe it's just something in the spirit. Maybe it's just something we can't even explain. Father God, break through, God. Maybe it's jealousy, bitterness. Maybe it's unforgiveness. Maybe it's something that will not just take today to pray through, but a, but a process, a long process. Even if that's the case, we need to take a step forward and start the process. Father, we hold a lot of our burdens inside and we don't ask for prayer. And we just let it fester in our spirit. And it goes around and around and around and it surfaces itself. And it rears its ugly head every season. Father God, cut the enemy off at its head right now, Father God. Father God, we just ask for, for a supernatural healing. God. A supernatural healing answer to a question a supernatural movement by your spirit God open the eyes of those who are blind open the ears of those who can't hear and dwell in those who are empty and dry give water to the thirsty today Father God bring comfort for the morning 
Bring companionship to the lonely. Bring family to the houseless. Bring Ohana, Father God, back to our church, God. Bring the spirit of community back to your church, God. Bring unity back to your church, Lord. Bring unity. Bring strength. Bring grace and mercy, Father God, back to your church, Lord. Let us be the ones who stand in your presence today, God, and fully commit to you, surrender to you, and yield to your spirit. Because if we can't do that, Lord, you can't move any of us forward. So Satan, I say again, you have no place in here. You or your demonic forces have no place in here. And, and I apologize and ask for your forgiveness if I'm freaking somebody else out right now. But we sometimes we got to just claim the authority and the power of Jesus in this place. And sometimes we got to call it for what it is. And sometimes we got to say, Satan, Get thee, not behind me, get the heck out of here. In Jesus' holy name. In Jesus' holy name. Somebody rejoice with the Lamb of God today. Somebody say, Hallelujah! 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 We are free by the blood of the Lamb. We are righteous because He is righteous. We have grace because He loves us. We are loved and accepted by the inheritance we receive by calling Him our Savior and our Lord and Shepherd. He is sovereign over us today. And give Him all the praise and the glory in Jesus' name and all of God's church said, Amen. Come on. Give Him praise. You better hug two or three people and say you are free in the name of Jesus right now. Come on. Hug somebody. created us in his, in his image, but there was a fall. And when that fall happened, we got a little separated, a lot separated from the Lord. And you know what? He loves us. And we give our lives back to the Lord. When we give our hearts back to the Lord, when we say, yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, that he came to this earth as a man, and he lived a treacherous life for us, and he hung on that cross and He was crucified for us. For not just the people who were there way back then, but for me, and for you, and for my son, Amen. and for my great-grandchildren. Yes, and in that, He gave such love for us. But I'm just human, and you're just human. The Holy Spirit came in here today, this morning, and he's done a lot of good things. But I'm telling you, the battle has been won. Amen. It has been won. We look at our giants and we get scared and we fall. And we might not talk nicely to our children. And we might not talk nicely to our spouses. 
and we might not talk nicely to that customer service person or that clerk. <laughs> but I'm telling you, and I'm telling myself today, in front of my own son, that I've been looking at giants and not at the victor because the Bible tells me today and has told me every single day when I choose to read it that the battle has been won. Satan has no hold on us. Do you understand that? As Christians, we may fall, we may fall, and we may humbug. But as Pastor said today, Satan doesn't have rights in here. When we plead the name of Jesus, Satan has to leave. Yes. He, does, he has no hold here. Darkness cannot be in light. Darkness cannot be in light. And i got to apologize because I'm only human. And I love every single one of you. And I love you, my son. And I'm sorry I've been hard. And I'm sorry I've had my eyes on the giants instead of having my eyes on loving you. And moms and dads, I would encourage you because when I was 13, my pastor asked every mom and dad to sit next to their kids, to stand together, to hold their hands, and to pray over each one of them. That changed my life and the way I looked at my parents. And I challenge you today that your battle with whatever's going on with your ohana or your finances or anything else. It's over. Look at the victor in Jesus and in the Holy Spirit. And don't look at those giants because they'll scare, they'll scare everything right out of you. I just want to thank the pastor and our pastoral staff for listening to the Holy Spirit and for allowing the church to be a church where the Holy Spirit moves. So I'm, I'm Andy, and I'm really supposed to be up here <laughs> to say, there's, if you're new here, we welcome you. Our, I welcome you with much aloha, and our pastoral staff does too. And we would love to get to know you after church out at the Fellowship of Coffee and stuff. But in the in-between time, there's a sheet of paper Inside your file, inside your bulletin, it's an Ecomomai paper. It's a welcome paper. Please fill it out so that we can get to know who you are. If you have any needs, any prayer requests, please write them out. If you have a praise request, please put it there. We'd love to talk to you and meet you. Please fill it out. If not, please come to one of us, any of us out at the coffee at the reception table. And we'd love to talk with you. Right now, I'm going to ask the pastor's wife. And as far as I'm concerned, she's Pastor Jamie. Yeah. She may not be ordained, but let me tell you, she's a mover and a shaker and a powerful wahini in the Lord. And she's coming up to speak to you. Yeah, I, I always go barefoot and hollow. This is um, a holy place. And I believe when I'm worshiping, I take my shoes off. <laughs> Oh, but I'm here to speak to you about uh, Family Promise. And uh, last week, if you were here, you actually heard some of the members uh, from Family Promise uh, share with you what they do and how our connection would be with them. And so, lo and behold, we have a week, but it starts today. <laughs> it starts today and it goes all the way to Saturday. Um, and the thing is, the reason why uh, they put us on hold was because they didn't have a facility and those are the kind of struggles that they they come up against and so last minute uh, someone pulled out and then just the day or maybe a few days ago someone allowed them to use their facility so we will be partnering up with um, I think it's called Japanese seven-day Adventist Church and it's in Manoa and uh, we need uh, lots of things, um, like from sheets, uh, especially sheets, because they, we need to provide the sheets for the twin sides uh, mattress, the air mattresses that they have. So we need 14 of them. Um, we also need um, 
people to either donate food or, or the ingredients for the food or you can actually make the food yourself and then drop it off at the church. You would have to be there every night or the one night that you're going to um, go ahead and uh, cook for, you need to be there at about 4.45. And I can give you more details about that. It'll The sign-up sheet will be at the connections uh, table outside. So if you're interested in doing that, um, please, I think Ka'ali might be there or myself will be there. And I can explain to you everything that we're, we're going to need. So food, um, breakfast foods, dinner foods. So we'll be there evenings from 4.45 to the next morning, 7 o'clock. We pack up and then they go back to the center and then later the next night they come back. So that's how it works. Every night from <coughs> tonight all the way to Saturday we'll be there. Any questions? No? Okay, come see me. I'll be out in the connections area. Thank you so much. Here you go, Andy. Mahalo. <laughs> We do have some other announcements. They're right in the file. Now, Wednesday night, even though we're doing this, uh, this Wednesday night, we are still going to have our midweek service. So that is at, yeah, Waianae Point Apartments, but Waianae Point. But you park over at Britannia Park, and then you walk on over. Now, sometimes you get there, you kind of look up and wave to the upper uh, sliding glass. Yeah, the upper room. There you go. Because the door is locked downstairs. So stand back and wave. Somebody will be looking out so they can come downstairs and let you in. And that starts at 6.30, I believe. Yes. And uh, so park over, pretend the youth will be there also. So bring, uh, bring the youth. Uh, we have a fantastic youth group that's growing. Um, there's other announcements. Please take a look at the bulletin. We have things coming up in the future. All right, ushers, are you ready? Let's go ahead and pray for our... our our tithes and offerings. Lord, we thank you very much for blessing, for blessing this church. Father, we raise up these tithes and offerings that you are preparing for us. Father, bless them, increase them. Not only bless and increase the offering and the tithes that are given, but Father, bless the giver for out of their giving, they grow deeper and deeper in you. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, ushers. Give the ushers a nice round of applause today. All right. Is everybody ready to get into the Word? Yes. Oh, man, I'm excited to get into the Word today. All right. Woo! Now, that's how you start service, baby. Woo! With a lot of snap, crackle, and pop. Popping in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Family, today we're going to start a new series, a new sermon series. The name of this new sermon series is called Activate 1-8. When we planted this church, the Lord has put a, a very strong scripture that we use as our foundation. And, but I think it's not until now, a year and a half later since the process of this church, where it's clearer on why the Lord gave us this scripture. Now the scripture is Acts chapter 1 verse 8. And it says this, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of of the earth. You know, the Lord had put that heavy on my heart in the very beginnings of planting this church and I knew it was because um, the heart of this church was to reach people that need Jesus. 
But how many times us as people, churches, we got the mission, but sometimes we don't have the method. <laughs> Let me explain. I go on a mission to lose weight all the time. <laughs> I just don't have the method sometimes. Or I have the wrong method. You may have a, a mission to accomplish something, but you don't always have the method. Now, I believe as we are growing and, and, and finding our way and seeking the Lord and watching what He's doing, seeing the opportunities that He's opening up and asking Him fervently uh, to open our eyes as a church, not only as a church, but you can do this individually too. As you grow in the Word and you grow in Him, um, seek Him fervently and He will open your eyes. But here's the thing. Sometimes God does this. He will take and He'll give you a glimpse of who He wants you to be. And He goes, you see this? Man, this is an awesome mission. This is what I want you to be. This is who you are in my eyes. And we get super excited. And we get, oh, that's awesome, Lord. That's so awesome. Look at that. I'm going to be one seven up. <laughs> but then, after he gives you the glimpse of who he wants you to be, he picks you up. And he takes you all the way back here. Now the process begins. So as we walk towards that process, and one thing that God does, you remember that movie uh, about the Marines and uh, Jack uh, Nicholson? A few good men. And uh, was it Tom Cruise or somebody told him, you know, oh, all I want is the truth. And he goes, you can't handle the truth. Sometimes I believe God's, God says that to me. He goes, God, just give me a clear path to that, please. Just give me the truth, God, so I can just get there. He goes, you can't handle the truth. The only way you're going to get there is to trust in me and step. And I will reveal Little by little, the process it's going to take to get to fulfill this mission, this person, this calling, this <coughs> preferred future for you as a person, for you as a church, for you as a can of soda. <laughs> So as the process of this church was planted, I believe he showed us already who we are, but now we're just figuring out the method. Mission and method. So what this new series is going to be about is hopefully we're going to take one verse out of the scripture. <laughs> and God revealed to me that I can preach on this scripture for the next six weeks. <laughs> so for the next six weeks, we're going to just take this one scripture. And we're going to break it down. Somebody say break it down. Break it down. That's me breaking it down. That's me breaking it down. So if you look at this scripture, it is the very core, the very character of who we are as a church. But you will receive power. Somebody say power. Power. When the what? When the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Today I'm going to talk about the power of the Holy Spirit. Because, and it's not a mistake that all of this happened this week and all of this happened in the service earlier. Because, you know what, when we want to talk about the power of the Holy Spirit, the enemy doesn't like that at all. The enemy doesn't want us to realize that we have power. We have victory. He doesn't want us to realize that the victory is already won. Right, Andy? He wants us to be kept down. He wants us to be on the ground. He wants us, he, he wants to hold us back. You ever have a little brother? I'm the oldest of three brothers, so I know what it is to be the oldest. And you know what I used to like to do is just hold their head like this. 
<laughs> and then your, your little brother would just do this. <laughs> See, Satan wants to do that to us. He wants to just hold our head and he and the word. And then it says in scripture, we were we should walk intently so we're not boxing the wind. But the only way we can strike effectively is if we keep our head higher. If we step back and we look and we say, you have no place in here. What empowers us to keep our head up and to claim victory is the power of the Holy Spirit. It's the fuel that will move the car. In our case, it's the wind that will push the sail of this canoe towards fulfilling the mission God has for us. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, we're going to talk a little bit today about the power of the Holy Spirit. I heard this story once, and it's, it's kind of, <laughs> the story circulating around now that I want to share with you today. One day, God was looking down on earth and he saw all of the evil that was going on. He's seeing what's going on in the Middle East. He sees what's going on in our country. He sees what he sees what goes on in our hearts. He's, he's looking around and he decided to send one of his angels down to earth to check it out. So he called one of his best angels. Must have been one archangel. Michael. Michael. Okay, we'll say Michael. And, and, and sent Michael to earth for a time. Now when Michael returned, he told God, yes, it's pretty bad, God. 95% is bad on earth. And only 5% of the people is good. 95% are just faking it, Lord. Even in the churches, there's only 5% population that truly are sold out for you, God. God said, can I be? Can I be? Said another angel. Check it out. Second angel came back. Yep, yeah, it's true, God. 95% of the people, 95% of the population is faking the funk, God. Only 5% are truly, truly running after you. So God said, well, in this new day and age, I'm going to communicate with my children the way they know how. So I'm going to send that 5% of text to encourage them to keep going on. To keep going on. You know what that text said? You never get the text either. I did. I was checking my phone all day. Well, nothing from God. But here's the truth of it. Without receiving the power of the Holy Spirit in us, we might as well be part of that 95%. And I know there's more good than 5% of the population. Because I know that when we receive Jesus truly in our hearts, we are filled with Him, His presence. Do you understand that? I don't think we give the person of the Holy Spirit enough credit. We always pray in the name of the Father and the Son. But we think the Holy Spirit is just a vapor or a ghost or a, a mist. Holy Spirit is just as important as the Father and the Son. In fact, they cannot function as God without the person of the Holy Spirit. And guess where that person lives? That person lives in you, in you, in you, in you. If you fully commit to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, God is in us. Holy Spirit is the giver and worker of the gifts. Our inner spirit man that helps us overcome our flesh. Oh boy, do we need help to overcome our flesh. Amen. 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 The Holy Spirit is the one that paints your dragons red. I talked about this on Wednesday. A lot of times, the deep spiritual issues we have in our heart are usually camouflaged. 
And if we're operating in the flesh, we're going to see things in the flesh. So we're going to look at our internal selves and go, I have nothing wrong with myself. I'm good. I'm a good person. I love, I say thank you. I let people go in front of me in traffic. I'm a good person. But what we don't realize, if we don't look through the eyes of the Holy Spirit, then we cannot really see what's going on. The Holy Spirit tags those things, flags those things. And you know what? Here's the thing that everyone needs to know. The Holy Spirit tags those things and raises those flags on those things not to condemn us because there is no condemnation in Jesus Christ. But we need to identify what seeks, kills, and destroys our heart. Because if it continues to roam like a lion in the high weeds of the African savanna, they go undetected because they're the same color as the weeds. Our sin usually tries to roam around as the same color as our deeds, not the weeds. And sometimes it hides in the good deeds that we do. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out. The Holy Spirit takes a broad brushstroke and paints those lines a bright color red. So you can see, ah, ha, 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 ah, there he is. There he is. And if we can see him, then we can pray for it and battle for it in the Spirit and eradicate it. Now, are we going to be eradicated 100%? No. But you know what? It's the process of walking towards the call. A process of walking towards your identity in Christ. And the process is to extract, eradicate the red lines lurking in your heart. And the only person that can give you the sight to see in the dark, like those night vision goggles the, the SEAL team wears, is the Holy Spirit. Who wants supernatural goggles today? <coughs> Hallelujah. But in order for it to work, in order for it to really do good in our lives, we need to yield to it. We need to submit to it. Somebody say amen. amen. You see, even Jesus himself showed us the way. <laughs> How many of you remember the story where Jesus, in, in the beginning of his, uh, he didn't even start his ministry yet. He is walking and he seeks out John the Baptist and he tells John, I need to get baptized. And John the Baptist is like, wait a minute, I'm not even worthy to wear this guy's sandals. Why should I baptize you? He said, because it needs to be done. I need, basically this is what Jesus did. I need to show my children how it's done. I need to show them the process from here to the preferred identity to the preferred calling in me. Jesus needed to do it to show us the way. Now what happened after Jesus got baptized in the water? It said that the Holy Spirit descended from heaven like a dove. Like a dove. A lot of people illustrate the dove coming down. It wasn't the dove. It was the person of the Holy Spirit coming down from heaven. And God said, this is my son who I'm well pleased. Now guess what happened right after that? Jesus went into the desert and was tempted by Satan for 40 days and 40 nights. What does that tell you? What does that tell me today? Without the Holy Spirit, we are dead in the desert. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot even begin the walk in our mission. Without the power of the Holy Spirit, we don't have the fuel to drive the car to our destination. Without the power of the Holy Spirit, we don't have the armor of God, Ephesians 6 says, to put on. 
to, to quench the arrows of the enemy. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot move an inch. So why did Jesus tell his disciples before he gave them the mission? He said, wait for it. Do not move until I send the Holy Spirit. And in verse 8 of chapter 1 of the book of Acts, he says, but when the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon you, then move. So why is it important to preach about the Holy Spirit today? Because we can't move if we don't understand this point. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, and if you're not sure, I'll give you that chance today. But, hey. amen. <laughs> because if we don't, then it's like I'm going to gift you with a brand new Lamborghini, but I'm not going to put a gas tank in it. You know what I'm saying? It looks nice. It smells nice. It has a nice, brilliant color. But it ain't going anywhere. Does that sound like some Christians in the church today? Oh! Did I just say that? Man, look at who He prays so eloquently. So shiny. He quotes the scripture. Oh my Lord Jesus, he has so much knowledge. But wait a minute. He's not doing anything. What? Why aren't people getting affected by the walk? I don't I don't I don't see others coming to the Lord. I don't see others running to the presence of Jesus Christ. Why? Because there's no date, just take. <laughs> Don't be a gas tankless Lamborghini today. I'd rather be a boss up Toyota Hilux 1971 pickup truck Ooh, yeah. with an Aruga horn and about 20 dents, sand coming out of the back of the, the tailgate, rust coming on the side. Broken, broken rearview mirror. <laughs> Start on the work all the time. Sometimes you gotta roll them down the hill and pop the clutch. But you know what? There's a lot of gas in the tank. I'd rather be that. I'd rather be that. I think I just described my first car. <laughs> but here's the thing. And I've driven. I've, I've driven. I've driven. I've, I've driven many vehicles in my life. Some nice ones, not so nice ones. But you know what? The one car I missed the most was that 1971 rusty bucket of bolts called the, 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 the pickup truck I had in high school. I missed that truck. I loved it. And back then, you could fill up your tank for like $5. But guess what? Today, you can fill up your tank for free. Guess what the Holy Spirit cost? 0, 0.006. Put that up on the billboard. Come in and fill your tank. Sunday is the day to do it. We have a whole line of cars going to Costco trying to fill up their gas tanks, but we don't have a whole line of cars coming, out, coming into the Voyager gas tank. People should be lining up to get their spirit filled. I got to fill my spiritual tank and walk home. I gotta spill, fill my spiritual tank and ride on Pat's moped. <laughs> but I don't complain, boo. Get wheels, boo. Get wheels, boo. We need to yield. Somebody say yield. <laughs> yield is one of the New Hope Voyager's core values. V O Y. The Y stands for yielding to the Holy Spirit because it's so important for us to yield. It's a constant battle to remain subject. To the spirit man in us. Amen? Amen. It, it's, a, it's, it's always a battle. Now, now, the battle Andy's talking about is our eternal battle is won. And, and we need to walk in victory. But there still is an eternal, internal battery, uh, battle going on between our flesh man and our spirit man. And what we need to do is continue to feed the spirit man so he wins that battle for us every day. Because the Holy Spirit lives in us. In us. 
and how uh, he needs to be yielded to so he can emerge in us as part of our character. The word yield, and I like the definition, the word, the word yield says to give way to arguments. That's the first definition of yield. How many of us argue with the Holy Spirit? I was arguing with the Holy Spirit just, just during worship. I'm like, Lord, I'm going to cut somebody's wire. I even, I don't know if you, you were worshiping, I hope, buddy. I don't know if you saw me. I kicked this thing on it. And I'm like, kick this thing on it, that darn thing work in Jesus' name. Kick it. <laughs> it's one thing when we battle in the flesh, man, when we try and kick it, we try and slap it. We try and yell at it. But what we should be doing is yielding to it. When the Holy Spirit's trying to talk, when the Holy Spirit is trying to direct, we cannot argue. We have to give in to this argument. We have to give in to its demands. We have to give in when the Holy Spirit is coming on us. Another definition of yield is to relinquish possession. <laughs> How many of us hold on tight? How many of us hold on tight? And I'm not even talking about stuff. I'm talking about anger. I'm talking about unforgiveness. I'm talking about bitterness. I'm talking about all these things. Lust. I'm talking about greed. I'm talking about things that we just don't want to let go of because these are the only things we know that kept us running. That is the fuel we chose to use before the Holy Spirit came to town. You see what I'm saying? And a lot of these things we still want to put in our tank. Holy Spirit saying, let go. And you're like, no, I cannot let go. Because I'm used to putting this ethyl in my tank. And the Holy Spirit, be unleaded. No, I want to be leaded. The Holy Spirit is going, cleanse yourself from that so I can fill it. And I'm like, no. No, it, it's hard for me to let go of my possessions. It's hard for me to let go of the money I have because I'm not sure if I'm going to make it next month, Lord. No, I'm telling you to move, so get out of the way. Relinquish possession. Give it up so I can move in there. You see, I always said Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and our Father God, they are the three most polite gentlemen in the universe. He will wait till we relinquish possession before he moves in. Sometimes he might crack us over the head many, many times, but it's us who need to relinquish possession to him. Another great de definition of yield is this. Allow another the right to speak in a debate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Holy Spirit, move when I'm talking with my wife. <laughs> Allow another the right to speak in a debate. I need that. I need that, Holy Spirit. Allow me to do that. But you know what? Allow us to do that as a church. We have a saying around here called Ho'olohe Pono, which is to listen carefully, intently, and righteously. That is the method to the mission. I talk about the method and the mission. That is the method to the mission. It's not over-talking or being overbearing. <coughs> it's about listening and learning. And when it comes to the case of the Holy Spirit, we need to ho'olohepono. We need to sit and listen to what the Holy Spirit has to say instead of trying to talk over the Holy Spirit all the time. But, 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 I had a point last week in my sermon. I said, we got to stop asking God to bless the things we're doing 
and start looking at what he's doing and join him. Now, a lot of that is us not listening to the Holy Spirit and not caring what the Holy Spirit is doing. All we want is the Holy Spirit to bless what we're doing. See, we're not allowing the Holy Spirit to speak in our argument. We got to give the right of way. We got to let it, let the person just come into your lane. This morning I was driving and I saw this white car right before the stoplight trying to get into the lane. And I was thinking, look at this person. <laughs> So late, they like come over into the lane. But I couldn't let them go. And then the car came in. I was like, hey, that's Cheryl and Mike. <laughs> Praise the Lord, I wouldn't let them go. It would have been a different story, right? If Pastor Sam went, no, I'm not going to let you go. Oh, sorry, yeah. Someone's always watching. That's why I don't put a big New Hope uh, Voyager sticker on the back of my car. <laughs> Actually, I had the thought of like, putting a, a, a Hope Chapel Olomana sticker on the back of my car. <laughs> so when, they, when I speed and cut people off, they would call Pastor Pio and Guy Capelliello. <laughs> oh, you know you guys congregation. They're driving like maniacs, boo. <laughs> We gotta look closely at what it means to yield to the Holy Spirit, amen? We gotta look closely at allowing Him the right of way in our life. Come on, Holy Spirit, go. I'm gonna kick back, go. You do it, you do it, I can't do it. That's the, that's the point right there. That's the point, you gotta let Him go. So how, how do we allow the Holy Spirit to direct our life? How do we allow the Holy Spirit to give us the method to the mission? Number one, you can write this down. Allow him to abide in you. Abide in you. You got to allow him to abide in you. What does abide mean? Abide means to inhabit, to infuse, to indwell. See, we might say the words of the prayer uh, that we're saved and that we, we want Jesus Christ to be our Lord and Savior. But then we need to choose to let the Holy Spirit abide in us. Yeah? Yeah? We need to let it, it it'll, it'll be dormant if we don't. God wants to live and abide in you as we abide in Him. Inhabit, infuse, relinquish possession of something, give something up. Yielding acknowledges we are not our own. Our life has been given over to God. That's what it means. We got to realize at some point, and hopefully it's early in our walk, that our life no longer belongs to ourselves, but we give, we relinquish the possession of our life, our future, our plans. We relinquish it to Him and the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 6, verses 19 and 20 says this, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You are bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. Yeah? Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You know? Some of you are little community churches. Some of us are mega churches. I just want a mega church for the Holy Spirit. Right there. Multiple campuses. The Holy Spirit has come to live in your life. This experience of God's presence is now the everyday experience and every believer. And it should be. The experience of the ever-present God within us. Every day. We get to experience that every day. If you're a believer. Before Christ, we couldn't experience that. You see? We thought the fuel we were using for our tank was good, but we didn't experience the jet fuel, power, rocket ship kind of Holy Spirit fuel that He wanted to give us. Now before that, we couldn't experience that exhilarating. 
You know what my favorite part of travel is? It's takeoff. You know the plane? I love that. I love it. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Now those 737s or 747s or whatever they are, you gotta put regular, regular unleaded fuel in, in, that, in that plane to make it take off like that? What do you need? You need a special kind of, I don't know what it is, but it's a jet fuel that's highly combustible, right? See, the Holy Spirit should be highly combustible in you. I like that. You know? And that's why we gather. Because we, if we all have highly combustible Holy Spirits, guess what happens? We spark one another, and then we just start setting everything. Setting people off. It's no fun being highly combustible by yourself. That's why God calls us together as a community. So we can be combustible together. And the spark is the worship. The spark is a word. The spark is your smile or your kind word to somebody else. And you spark that Holy Spirit in somebody. And then we come alive in Christ. Who wants to be alive in Christ? Oh my gosh, you don't look like it. If you're sleeping, you better get up. I'm looking up there in the shadows. Highly combustible is the Holy Spirit. Must say that in Psalms somewhere. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so the next time you feel that you're struggling with your sin, remember that you have God's highly combustible spirit in you. Allow that to be what reminds you to deny yourself. Because we're called to deny ourselves. We are called to dispossess our life and let Him possess it. Because we can get off track quite a bit. I mean, Andy, I love your heart, my brother. I love your transparency before the church. But you are not unique in this church. You're just speaking for us. You're speaking for me. You're speaking for everybody else here. We often will fall. We often will look at our giants and curl up in a fetal position and not willing to go on. But the next time we feel that, let this word of the Holy Spirit living in you continually cleanse you from unrighteousness and continue to spark you into action because the victory is won. Amen? Amen? We can get off track. We can get off track with our stuff. We can, we can uh, get off track and be distracted so we, we, we have a hard time allowing that Holy Spirit to take place in our, our life. But we need to spark it. We need to come back. But before we can do this, we must be willing to give up on our self-focus. And that's what this... And I, and I didn't say self-inventory or self-awareness. I said part of God's plan for us so that we mature in Him is to put our eyes off of here and put our eyes out here. See, that's what being a, a missional church is. You see, we're going to actually allow God to cleanse us and grow us by what? By actually going out, stepping out, and living out the Word. And that's what this whole series is about. And we're not going to be able to do that unless we allow the Holy Spirit to do it. You see, we are not created to go before God to hold God's hand and lead Him to where we want to go. We need to do this and allow Him to lead us where we need to go. So number two, allow Him to lead you. Number one was allow Him to abide in you. First, you need to allow Him to live and take over, occupy. There's a big old discussion right now. 
that my brothers and sisters in the Hawaiian community are, are really struggling through right now. There's a lot of new information coming up about the illegal occupa occupation of these islands, the illegal overthrow of our, our kingdom, the, the whole sovereignty movement, and all of this, and we're fighting with the, well, not fighting, but we're having these discussions in the federal government. There's that one Hawaiian who's actually suing President Obama. All right. <laughs> because it's his responsibility for this ongoing generational uh, uh, travesty against our Hawaiian people. But you know what? I'm not saying I don't care about that. I actually do because I care about the people, our native people here in the islands. But what I care more about is I care about first the occupation of my heart by the Holy Spirit because if we, we don't let Him occupy us, we're not going to be able to help anybody else in their injustices. And you know what? When you allow the Holy Spirit to occupy the nation of your heart, the other squabbles don't seem to be as large. Because your eyes have become broadened by the kingdom and by the Holy Spirit. So, number one, let Him abide in you. Let Him occupy you. But after that, number two, now let Him lead you. Let Him lead you. We had a little experience of that today. Just the leading of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes I have no clue what's going to happen in service. But as we abide, <coughs> abide with Jesus, He starts directing. And you know, a lot of that happens in our life, or it should happen in our life. A lot of times, and how many of you, sometimes it happens to this and we show stories about this all the time. We're walking down the street and we don't know why we're supposed to go via, but we go via anyway, and boom, you meet somebody, bam, boom, you get to pray for them, this and that. Movement of the Holy Spirit and to discern that is very important. We got to allow the Holy Spirit to lead us. Cease to argue about, allow another the right to speak in a debate. This is how we let the Holy Spirit move. I love these definitions because they speak on a much bigger level of letting the Holy Spirit be our advocate. Someone who works on our behalf. Do you know that the Holy Spirit is your advocate? He works on behalf of you. So let Him go. John 16 says this, But in fact, it is best for you that I go away because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. Jesus is telling his disciples, you see, I got to go. I got to be crucified. I got to die. I got to rise again from the dead. And I need to ascend to heaven because this is all part of the process of the method for the mission. If I don't go, then I cannot send the one because Jesus Okay, if you separate, and they're not separated, but if you think about the person of Jesus Christ, the person of Jesus Christ, what, what Jesus is saying is, I, oh my goodness. Okay, listen to this. Jesus' plan for you are off the charts, thousand times much better than our plans for ourselves. Now, Jesus is telling his disciples, because they're begging him, don't go, Jesus. And of course, if I had Jesus in my midst, I go, please don't go, Jesus. You are my Savior. You are the Lord. Can you just hang with us for the rest of our lives? But Jesus is going, I have such a better plan for this earth. And the only reason that I need to go is to fulfill this larger plan. Now, I can stay, but it won't be fulfilling the larger mission that I have. God has a mission. God has a place for every single one of you. But if we don't get out of the way, and if we don't look so narrow-minded at what Jesus is doing, then we cannot, we cannot partake in the bigger picture. See, Jesus is talking about the bigger picture. If I cannot go away, he says, then I cannot send the Holy Spirit down to, to live in you. Now see, this is the whole reason. If this is a big, huge part of God's plan. Yeah, because if, if, if the Holy Spirit is, is, wasn't part of the plan, oh my goodness, we'd be dead in the water. 
The part of the plan was he needed to ascend into heaven so they could he could send the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is God himself living in us. Because we are not capable, we are not talented enough, we don't have the power enough to fight sin and Satan on our own. Without God in us, it is hard for us to make a difference in God's mission here on earth. Amen? All right. So, number one, let them abide. Number two, let them lead. We got to let them lead. When the Spirit of truth comes, now I'm going, to, I'm going on verse 13 in John 16. It says this, when the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you, see, into all truth. He will speak on His own, but will tell you what He has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever He receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. This is why I said the Spirit will tell you whatever He receives from me. Jesus was trying to paint the picture to them about the greatness of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the Son who belongs to the Father. The Holy Spirit lives in us. And whatever Jesus says, the Holy Spirit says. There is a pure connection between the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So let him abide. Let him lead. Number three, allow him to move. Allow him to move. Allow him to move. We got to get out of the way. We got to get... There's a rapper. His name is Ludacris. He had this cool song called Get Out of the Way. Get Out of the Way. Get Out of the Way. Move. I think of that song every time I'm fighting and I got to let the Lord... Just lead me. You, we got to get out of the way. We got to give right of passage into your lane. Marcus Malapai, good brother, pastor out at the uh, Legacy Church, says, said to me, and I always use it now, I, I stole this quote. Our plans are always plan B. Holy Spirit is always plan A. We got to let him move. We got to let him go. We got to let him come into our lane and let him lead us, not let him move us. So sometimes we put a cap on the Holy Spirit. Sometimes the Holy Spirit wants to move and we're going to go, oh God, you're not asking me to do that. So we'll just put a cap on you for now. We got to allow him to move. No matter how nuts, if it lines up with the Word of God. Now remember, Jesus belongs to the Father, and whatever Jesus says is the Holy Spirit says. There is no disconnect between Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Whatever Jesus, whatever Jesus wants to move, the Holy Spirit's going to move. Now when the Holy Spirit moves, sometimes we're going to go, oh, wow, ooh, ooh. move to the mainland, sell everything you own, move your two little babies to California. I don't know, that's kind of crazy, God. But we've got to get out of the way. I got to move when you say move. And if we don't, we're not going to experience the fullness of what Jesus has for you. And you're going to know it's Jesus because it lines up with the very character and the Word of God. So if you have a hard time discerning if it's the Holy Spirit or not, it needs to line up with the character and the Word of God. And how do you know the character of God? Through the Word of God. See, Holy Spirit move, character, word of God, all moves together. All moves together. All moves together. We got to be connected, man. We were joking today, me and Ray. Speakers won't, weren't set up, I mean, weren't hooked up. And then Ray said, jokingly, he said, Hey, let's just have a lot of faith that the speaker's going to work today. <laughs> and I was laughing because I was thinking, gee, a lot of us try and operate like that. We expect sound to come out of these speakers, but we don't want to connect the cable. <laughs> right? 
Sometimes that's our walk with Christ. Lord, I want to be the speaker box for you. We want to speak the things of the Lord. We want to minister in the name of the Lord. But sound's not going to come out if you're not plugged in. If you don't take this cable, stick it in and turn it and lock it in, sound's not going to come out. Either that or the wrong sound's going to come out. And many of people got led astray by the wrong sounds. <laughs> so how do we connect God's PA system to us who are his speaker boxes? By the cord and the cable of the Holy Spirit. You guys got it? Okay. And sometimes you got to check that, that connection. Or else it's going to crackle. And pop. Sometimes we're going to fall. Sometimes the bug are not going to be connected just right. And we're going we're to be speaking the word. And they want that. <laughs> pop. And speaking the word again. We're not going to be perfect all the time. But we always, always got to check that connection. With the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, and the character of God. Amen? Romans 8, verses 8 through 9 says this. Those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. You see, if we're, we ourselves are not being controlled or led by the Holy Spirit, guess what? We're being led by sin. It's either or, gang. It's not this happy middle ground where I'm not going to fully commit to Jesus, but I'm not really one murderer, so I'm just going to be ready out. No, no, no. If we're not being led by the Holy Spirit, we're being led by sin. It, it's not, it's, see, oh, that's where people, ooh, I want to just, oh. And we're going to talk more about this later, but next week, oh. But um, the, thing, the thing is, we believe there is a middle ground. We believe that we don't need to buy in fully to this Holy Spirit thing. But I'm, I know rape or murder anybody, so I just go live my life. You know what God says about lukewarm people? I will vomit you out of my mouth, God said. Kind of strong language for God. But he's making a point. I will spew you some, some, some definitions say. Spit you out. Because it's either being led by me or led by sin. There's no middle ground. Those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. You, however, Paul is saying, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit. If the Spirit of God lives in you, he said. I guess there's a big if in there. So, I'm going to use the words of Paul today. You, however, you hope voyager, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit. If the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. Understand this passage doesn't speak to sin's control, but it speaks about our control. We all have a hard time letting go of the control over our lives. You, you get what I'm saying? We all have a hard time giving up control of the control over our lives. Sometimes the Spirit is moving us in a direction that is not what we think is best. <laughs> oh, God. But we must remember what yielding truly means. The Spirit always knows what's best. The Spirit of God always knows what's best. Understanding that yielding to the Holy Spirit is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. This process must be daily, repeated, every day. It's like breathing. This yielding to the Holy Spirit, 
this intentional giving in, giving up possession of our life. This is not only a one-time prayer and done. We need to yield to this spirit every day, every moment, just like breathing. You know that an average person takes over 21,000 breaths a day. 21,000. Everybody breathe in. It's about 10,000 already. Right there. 21,000 times we breathe in a day. 21,000 times we should be yielding to the Holy Spirit's power. A day. In the same regard, we need that reminder it cannot be skipped you try skip breathing for a day see how that works for you we cannot we are denying life if we forget to breathe we well, we're denying life so if we forget to yield to the power of the holy spirit then we're de denying life we're de denying the very life that God wants to give us. So let it abide in you. Let Him abide. Not it. Because it's not an it. He's, he's, he's a very real person and He is God. <laughs> so let Him abide in you today. Let Him lead you today. And let Him move. Get out of the way. Allow God the room He needs to dance in your life. Stop crowding Him out with our own stuff. Turn outward because there's a huge world that God wants to touch through you. There's so many lives that can be changed through you. If you allow the Holy Spirit to move. There are very nations that can be changed through you. If you allow the Holy Spirit to move. Do you believe that? Yes. Amen. I want to close with this and then we're going to take communion. I want to read to you an email I got over the last couple of weeks. And this illustrated the point of us taking our eyes off of ourselves and looking for what God is doing. Let me read you this email. It says this. Aloha New Hope Voyager. My name is Liana. My cousin's name is Cy Francisco who has been attending New Hope Voyager. Not sure if he's a member but he says he's been going regularly. I'm not sure where to start, but here it goes. My cousin Sai is homeless and has been staying at IHS since March 2014. I got a call back in the beginning of June saying he was at Queens Hospital. They said that he had only a few weeks to live. And we, my family, should go visit him before he passes. He's dying of liver cancer. He said he knows Jesus and has made peace with the situation. He also said that he's been attending your church regularly. Yay! Exclamation point, exclamation point. And also said that he really loves his pastor, Sam Kapoor. <laughs> Since he's been in the hospital, he's been getting New Hope Voyageritis and says he misses going to our church so much. I asked him if his church could be seen on the Olelo channel or Kahlo. Uh, so I'm asking, is Pastor Sam Kapu on Olelo station? Do you guys have uh, your sermons recorded on CD? Um, if it is on CD, um, I would like to pick up some for him so he can listen to it in his hospital room. I'm trying to keep his spirits up. Could you please let me know if I can pick up some of the pastor's sermons? That would be greatly appreciated. I told him he should watch my pastor, P.O. Sua Gardnet from Hope Chapel, Olamana. 
on Olelo. He said he does watch whatever comes on Olelo sometimes, but giggled and said, I still really miss Pastor Sam's sermons. I just want to make the end stage of his life comfortable, as can be for him. I apologize if I'm all over the place for this email. I've been trying all day to type this while I'm at work. Um, I replied um, about a week and a half ago, and I said, hey, this is Pastor Sam Liana. Can I get more info on Sai? I really want to go down to visit him and, and, and take him some video. Um, uh, sorry, we don't check this email too often, but I would love to see him and bring him something at the hospital. Um, and our sermons can be found on YouTube if that works. Thank you for your email. My love to your Pastor Pio. He's my brother. And uh, God bless you all. Aloha, Pastor Sam. And then later on that afternoon, I got the reply back from Leanna. And she said this, don't worry about it. My cousin just passed away this morning. Thank you, though. I was meaning to call uh, to talk to a friend that goes to your church, Jan. But I was just too busy. The good news is that he knows Jesus and he spent his days when he had no visitors reading his Bible. He spoke a lot about you and your sermons and the people at Voyager Church. Thank you, Jesus. He raved about your worship team and just downright love that he got connected with Jesus at his church. You see, this is the problem. I was reading the, the name Sai, and I couldn't figure out who that was. Sometimes we get so focused on our stuff that we're not seeing what God is doing in our midst. That's Brother Sai right there. And I've been praying for him and his family every day. And it's not that we intentionally let people or, or things fall to the cracks. But I'm just saying that as we go to this series, it's not about us, gang. It's about what God is doing. God is doing. through. We don't know what people are going through. We don't know if this is their last weeks on earth. We don't know if you or me could there be their only Jesus they see before they die. This is the urgency of what I'm talking about in activating Act 1A in our life. And this will not happen if the Holy Spirit doesn't move in your life. I love you, brother Sai. We see you up there on the Golden Streets. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have the uh, ushers prepare Holy Communion. And as we pass out the elements, Let's just take some time to seek the Lord in our hearts. To ask God to bring us a new focus, a new vision for our lives. To see the mission and the preferred future for us. So, ushers, go ahead. Pass out the elements as we get ready. Communion is all about remembering. This message was all about not forgetting. Not forgetting who the Holy Spirit is in our life. So as we take communion today, let's all remember what God is doing. What God is doing. We may complain about our lives. We may complain about what we're going through. But if we take the focus off of that and put the focus on what God is doing, oh my gosh, my spirit is refreshed. <coughs> my heart becomes light. And my fervor to fulfill God's call becomes stronger and stronger. Amen? Amen. So receive the, the elements right now. In the upper room, one of the upper rooms, 
The Last Supper was in an upper room too. Jesus got his disciples together and they all broke bread. It was more than a dinner. Again, Jesus was showing us the way. He took the bread and he broke it and he said, every time you break bread, remember that my body was broken for you. Then he took a cup of wine. <coughs> it wasn't an elaborate, silver, jeweled chalice. No. It was a simple cup. Because the important thing is not the cup the wine was in. <laughs> the important thing was what was in the cup. And Jesus told his disciples, every time you drink of this, remember me and the blood that I shed for your glory, for your salvation. So basically, the whole sacrament of the Holy Communion or the Eucharist revolves around the principle of, of not looking at our own complaints. It's not looking at our own problems. It's not looking at our own circumstances. But the whole purpose of the Eucharist is to put our eyes on what Jesus did for us. He was broken, tortured, battered, whipped, bruised, beaten, stabbed, he bled, he was broken in body. His blood poured out for you and me in our sin. The whole purpose why Jesus has us take communion is to give us a new perspective or bring us back to the right perspective. So as we take the elements today, let Jesus, let the Holy Spirit, let the Father lead you into this pono, this righteous perspective. That it's all about Jesus. It's all about what He says. It's all about what He's doing. So once we all receive the elements, I want everybody to take the bread. <coughs> and when you do, remember what Jesus has done for you in His broken body for your sin. And when you have taken the bread, everybody take the wine. This is His blood that was shed for you forever. And as we come together as a family to break bread and remember Jesus, what I like to do is celebrate the victory His blood and broken body brought us. So everybody give a shout to the Lord today. Ooh. Hallelujah! Everybody get to your feet. Let us not skip steps in the process God has for you. Let's Remember the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Because those who are controlled by the power of sin does not please God. Who wants to please God? If we need to please God, that means we need the Holy Spirit to be leading us. We need the Holy Spirit in us. Before we sing our last song, before we close, everybody repeat after me. Father, live in me. May the power of the Holy Spirit control my life. I allow you to abide in me. I allow you to lead me. And I allow you to move in my life. In Jesus' name, amen.